Good morning and welcome to worship at All Saints Episcopal Church and a special word of welcome to our guests in worship this day. We're glad you're here and we hope that you'll come back often. You can learn more about the ministry of All Saints at allsaintsconcord.org. Our worship is from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer and is found in the liturgy that accompanies this post. We will begin today by hearing from one of our own, Jack Jones. Hello, my name is Jack Jones and I'm a freshman in high school. I like to participate in activities such as swim, soccer, golf, basketball, hunting, playing video games, and much more. This quarantine has been nothing if not unpredictable. Most of our travel slash summer plans were canceled, not saying I didn't enjoy my summer. I hung out with my friends around my neighborhood and actively participated in my hobbies listed before, especially video games. This school year so far, I have played high school soccer and seen most, if not all, of my school friends. On the topic of my activities during the, this pandemic, I would like to talk about Perch Church and how it was a getaway from normal pandemic life. To start off, I will explain what is Perch Church. Perch Church is a weekly small-scale church service at the Collier's house on Sundays. Instead of a normal church service where there are set speakers and a priest and deacon, each of us are assigned roles such as reading the prayers of the people or getting the music for dismissal. The biggest difference in my eyes between normal church and perch church is where there where we would have sermon, we have what is called te teaching. Teaching is a couple questions that relate to the reading for you to ponder or talk over in groups, socially distant groups, of course. A lot of these questions tie into current events such as racial injustice, and it's a chance to openly speak your mind in a welcoming community. At the end of the 20 minutes or so, we pray for someone within your group about whatever they would like to be prayed about. Perch Church has been a blessing to me during this pandemic. Thank you for letting me share about it. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, increase in us the gifts of faith, hope, and charity, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Leviticus. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to all the congregation of the people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not render an unjust judgment. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great. With justice you shall judge your neighbor. You shall not go around as a slanderer among your people and you shall not profit by the blood of your neighbor. I am the Lord. You shall not hate in your heart any one of your kin. You shall reprove your neighbor, or you will incur guilt yourself. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. Let us read together the portion of Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water bearing fruit in due season, 
with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silent the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord with your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, How can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commands hang all the law and the prophets. When I first considered becoming an Episcopalian in 1994, I went to an inquirer's class at St. Peter by the Lake up in Denver, North Carolina. The congregation was small and aging, and there were no young families. We have a lot more young families here at All Saints. This class was made up of two families, a total of three children, one in middle school, two in high school. As Father Ron Taylor explained the basics of the faith, my daughter Carolyn looked at him and said, how are we supposed to remember all that? And Father Ron said, you only have to remember two things. Love God, love your neighbor. The rest is details for the theologians to figure out. I never forgot that. So today, having this incredible opportunity to share my thoughts on the gospel, it is a hand of God moment, as Carolyn and I would say, that today, this would be the gospel lesson. Love God. We know God loves those who are faithful, say their prayers, and follow the way of Jesus. We know God loves the children and entrusts them to us to help nurture, love, and protect them So they not only grow up, but they thrive. God also loves people who make choices that turn them away from God. He doesn't give up on them. God loves people of all faiths or no faiths. There is no one whom God does not love. God even loves the people who disagree with you on social media. To show our love, we sing to his glory. We lift prayers to exalt him and thank him for his love and grace and forgiveness he extends to each of us. We glorify him as we appreciate the beauty of the planet he entrusted to us. And we might feel some guilt for not only allowing, but participating in the damage and misuse of this beautiful creation. He knows our hearts before we can ever say, forgive me, Lord. And so we honor him by showing mercy fighting for justice and being humble. 
love your neighbor. COVID, our public health emergency, has become politicized. Christians are lined up on opposite sides, citing the same scripture to support their view. There are food delivery shortages and hungry people straining the food bank resources. Children are not in school full time and Zoom is the new Starbucks where people gather. People are lonely and feeling isolated. Parents are juggling online jobs and online school with multiple children and an unstable internet. Jobs have been lost and for some despair has set in and it's clear we are all so very tired. But Jesus called us to love each other by caring for each other, feeding those who are hungry, sitting with those who are in mourning or in pain or any kind of trouble. He commanded us to care for the elderly and for the children. He didn't say only care for the ones you love or the ones who look and think like you. He said, care for them all. But how? The water is so deep and our boats are so very small. Love God, love your neighbor. Loving God and loving your neighbor have now manifested themselves in such creative ways. People have shopped and or delivered food to high-risk friends and family and neighbors, coordinated drive-by celebrations, nursing home visits and family get-togethers. People who are anxious about technology have taken a deep breath, figured out Zoom with the help of their friends and family, and have become connected again. Foyer groups meet via Zoom. Food donations were collected from porches and the Tour de Saints went virtual. The gospel was shared in neighborhood perch churches and ministries are using Zoom to remain engaged and continue their work. Online offerings like Sacred Ground and the Wednesday Bible Study are all virtual and well attended. The choir is doing Zoom. Vestry meets via Zoom and sometimes the Fulton girls drop in to say hello and that is a refreshing moment. Our education wing has been updated and has brought sunlight and beautiful views of our grounds into the classrooms for our children to learn what it means to love God, to love your neighbor, and to appreciate and care for the beauty of God's creation. Maybe we've turned these boats into the wind. The beacon of light that is all saints has been kept burning by each of us as we have truly come to realize that the church is not the building the church is each of us giving what we can in our own ability to preserve the wonderful work of all saints, both in the community and in communion with each other. Our light guides the community to come to us with their needs, knowing our response, like Jesus will say, what do you want us to do for you? And in faith, all saints responds. Even during this pandemic, CCM donations were up in general and the donation made from Tour de Saints was matched. CVAN donations for women from women for this congregation never skipped a beat, and those donations were matched. Regular and capital campaign pledges have continued, and we have been blessed with grant awards, special gifts, and needed donations to the assistance fund. The needs are so great in our community, and All Saints is always ready to push up her sleeves and see what can be done. Nothing is impossible when we step out in faith to ensure the work of this church will grow and thrive. So while we're all, all out there zooming around the internet and gathering six feet apart and feeling a great sense of accomplishment just for getting out of bed in the morning, please continue to pray for each other, for our community, for those you love, for those you don't, and for those who don't love you. Continue to be faithful stewards to the work of all saints. Pray for calm seas, gentle breezes, and always keep sight of the light by loving God and loving your neighbor. Amen. Let us proclaim together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Friends, the Lord has been our refuge from one generation to another. Let us pray to our God, saying, Show your servants your works, O Lord, and be gracious to us. We pray for the leaders of the church. Give bishops, priests, deacons, and lay leaders gentle and loving hearts. Empower us to share the gospel and ourselves with those in need. Show your servants your works, O Lord, and be gracious to us. We pray for all humankind. Prosper the work of our hands. May all those who work earn a fair wage. May those without work find strength and encouragement in your love. Give us hearts to respect the dignity of every human being. Show your servants your works, O oh Lord, and be gracious to us. We pray for all creation. You brought forth the mountains. You gave birth to the land and the earth. Give us the desire and will to care for all you have made. Show your servants to work your works, O oh Lord, and be gracious to us. We pray for the areas in which we live. Oh God, we want to obey what you command. Help us to love our neighbors as ourselves. Show your servants your works, O oh Lord, and be gracious to us. We pray for the afflicted and the suffering, and we pray for those who weep and mourn. Nurse them back to health as a mother tenderly nurses her children. Please add your own petitions and thanksgiving. Show your servants your works, O oh Lord, and be gracious to us. We pray for those who have died, though we are swept away like a dream in this mortal life. You promise to raise us to life immortal through your Son. May your graciousness, O oh Lord, be upon us. Show your servants your works, O Lord, and be gracious to us. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Sisters and brothers, let us pray together the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Be steadfast in faith, joyful in hope, and untiring in love all the days of your life. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Creator, the Christ, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you this day and remain with you and those you love and care for and those you don't, now and always. Amen. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Hello, I'm Don Foskey and I want to talk to you about All Saints Thanksgiving Food Drive of Saturday, November 14th. Our, this will be our third food drive this year. Uh, our first two were quite successful. We were able to donate over 4,000 pounds of food to CCM's food pantry. Uh, now we're entering Thanksgiving, uh, and it's going to be a very different Thanksgiving for many of our neighbors. For the first time, many of them will be food insecure. Imagine entering a time of celebration of God's abundance and not being able to be sure you can feed your family. Uh, so I'm asking for you to donate food generously as you've done in the past. Uh, there are two ways you can donate. As in our past food drives, you can uh, sign up online uh, using the link in the weekly word. Uh, simply place your food by your front door uh, before 9 on November 14th, that's Saturday, November 14th, or you can uh, bring the food directly here to the parking lot at All Saints and make the donation in person. Either way, the food will get to the food pantry. So it's, it's November 14th, Saturday, November the 14th. Uh, thank you for your consideration. Uh, your food donation will be a blessing to our neighbors. <laughs>